Asset liability management is all about managing risk. So let's discuss the specific risk factors that are faced by a bank. Probably the first thing that jumps to your mind is interest rate risk. And you see there are several different types of interest rate risk, which we're going to discuss each of these in turn. So let's start with interest rate gap risk. A couple examples of this are if you had fixed and floating rate instruments that weren't matched. For example, if you had fixed rate assets, okay, so let's say that you had some 30-year fixed rate mortgages, okay, so fixed rate assets, and they had an interest rate of 4%, and then you had floating rate liabilities, okay, so floating rate at, let's say, 0.5%. So then the bank has a margin of 3.5%. They have an interest margin of 3.5%. But what if the interest rate goes up? Now the floating rate goes from 0.5 to, let's say, 1%. Now the bank's margin has shrunk to just 3%. Okay, so that's one example of interest rate gap risk. Uh, also, you can have an issue with the timing of if you had a floating rate asset and a floating rate liability. Okay, so let's say instead of fixed rate assets, let's say it was floating rate. Now, what do I mean by timing? Well, let's say you had a situation where the floating rate uh, asset, it reset annually. But the floating rate liabilities, so these are liabilities here, so the floating rate liabilities reset monthly. So now if interest rates go up, you say, well, what's the problem? They're both going to go up. They're both floating rate. The assets and the liabilities are floating rate. So aren't they both going to go up? Yes, but the liabilities reset monthly. So they're in the assets reset annually. So this is going to be 12 times a year the liabilities reset, whereas the assets reset just once a year. So the liabilities are going to reset faster. So the interest rate on the liabilities, if, if rates go up, interest rate on the liabilities will climb faster than the interest rate on the floating rate assets. So if we have a time, so if we fix versus floating, or even if we have both are floating, assets and liabilities, but there's an issue with timing of resetting, uh, we're, we could be exposed to interest rate gap risk, where basically a change in interest rates can have an adverse impact on, on the bank's net interest income. Now, basis risk, this is a situation where we have different indexes involved. So let's just say that you have the assets. Okay, so you have floating rate assets. Okay, so floating rate assets, and they were tied to the one month LIBOR. Okay, one month LIBOR. And let's say that you had floating rate uh, liabilities, but the liabilities were tied to the six month LIBOR. Okay, so we have a different index in each case. Now, if they both increase by the same amount of basis points, so let's say that uh, this increased by 10 basis points, this increased by 10 basis points, we don't have an issue. But what if this increase by 30 basis points, this, whereas the one month of the LIBOR only increased by 10 basis points? Okay, so now we're gonna have we're gonna have a difference. You see, there's when they're tied to different indexes, and the indexes have a different change. Okay, that can have effects on the bank's uh, net interest income. Okay. Now, option risk is pretty simple. Uh, we have a counterparty. They decide to exercise an option. Uh, that option could be a number of things, but whatever it is, it ends up changing the cash flows of some financial instrument that the bank has. Okay, so that could, there could be a lot of examples for that. Prepayment risk, okay, prepayment risk, which is actually a type of option risk. Prepayment risk is, so let's say you've got, you've got a 30-year fixed mortgage, Okay, so this is uh, one of the bank's assets. They got a 30-year fixed, uh, fixed rate mortgage. And the borrower decides, hey, oh, interest rates have come down. I'm going to prepay this mortgage. I'm going to pay it off early so I can go to some other bank and borrow from them at a lower interest rate. Okay, so that's prepayment risk. So why is that a problem? Why is, why is this related or why is this under a, a type of interest rate risk? Because prepayment risk... Uh, like other types of option risk, is very closely related to the interest rate. So in the example I gave, why would someone pay off their mortgage early? Interest rates came down. Okay, so let's say they have a mortgage that is 5%. Interest rates come down, and they say, well, now I can go to another bank, and I can get a rate of, let's say, 2.7%. So now they say, well, you know what? I'm going to pay off this mortgage, go to this other bank, and get, and get a rate of 2.7%. So the interest rate comes down. And so now there's they prepay the mortgage. Now you say, well, why why is this a why is this such a bad thing for the the bank? Well, when you're getting five percent from the borrower, and then they say, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay this off. And I'm gonna go elsewhere. You just lost. You were getting five percent on that. Now you're not getting. Now they paid you back, 
but now you're not getting that 5% anymore. So now if you go out and you say, well, let's, let's originate another mortgage, but now you're going to be stuck with like 2.7 or whatever around the market rate. Okay. You're not going to be able to get 5% anymore. Okay. So these are all different types of interest rate risk. So the interest rate changes and there's some kind of adverse effect on the bank. Okay. Specifically their net interest income, economic value of their equity and, and so forth. There are other risks the bank has as well, exchange rate risk. So let's say there's a change in the value. If we look at the ratio from like euros to Japanese yen or euros to US dollar, something like that, there's a change. Uh, and so when the bank is basically translating their foreign, uh, foreign currency back into their home currency, uh, then you know there could be a, a gain or a loss there. Price risk is just you know the bank has some investments. Maybe the bank has an equity investment they, in uh, in a company like Microsoft or something. Maybe they own a lot of stock in Microsoft, and there's a change in the price of that investment. Uh, the, you know the bank's trading portfolio there, so that that can affect. Uh, the bank adversely. Uh, credit risk has to do with back to the issue of a borrower. Let's say we got a 30 year mortgage and the borrower defaults, right? The borrower doesn't pay. And so that's a risk that you're always going to have, uh, particularly if you have like subprime mortgages or something like that. Uh, there's the even higher uh, credit risk. So there, there was always a risk that the borrower is not going to repay. Uh, liquidity risk is there's some kind of scenario that could happen. For example, let's say there's a run. Or, or the the repo market seizes up, or let's say the bank gets a lot of uh, funding. They rely heavily on mortgage-backed securities, okay, or other, other types of asset-backed securities. And all of a sudden, uh, there's there's a, a financial crisis, and the bank has a hard time uh, raising funds with mortgage-backed securities, or or maybe it has some asset-backed security like credit card receivables or something. They bundle bundle up and securitize, and all of a sudden they can't raise funds that way anymore. So now what happens is uh, they might have to go to some kind of extreme measure to be able to raise capital and pay a much higher rate than what they had thought. Or worst case scenario, uh, the bank can't access any more sources of funding and the bank could become insolvent.